This is the current state of the kitchen and we decided to use some peel and stick wallpaper to transform the cabinets from this to this. I know, pretty amazing, right? I'm kind of proud of this one. So if you want to know how that just happened, it was not in a blink of an eye. I'm now going to show you how we transform this kitchen with mostly peel and stick. We are starting here with some b-rolls of the kitchen and what it looked like before. As you can see, all of the kitchen cabinets are this very modern millennial grey and definitely not a fan of this colour. The counter is a darker grey. All of the appliances are stainless steel. The backsplash is also made of grey tiles. So it was just grey on grey on grey on gray and we just needed to add some life and color and calm to this kitchen. So I'm just going to show you a little sample here of the four options that we got to put on the kitchen cabinets. The left one is way too dark but we thought initially we were going to cover all of the cabinets with a darker tone and when it arrived we realized the kitchen doesn't get a lot of natural light, it's far away from the windows so we then ordered the other three options and they are very different as you can see and it's not necessarily that obvious when you look online which is the whole purpose of comparing ordering and comparing options before you go for one the second one from the left looks fake you can actually see the pixels and the contrast is a little too sharp so it was eliminated the third one from the left is leaning towards pink so it looked a bit odd it was also very smooth and reflecting light a lot and so didn't look very real for that reason. It really looked like a sticker. But the fourth one is our winner. It really has some texture that makes it really look and feel as if it was real wood. And the color is actually a really good match. It's very light. It matches a lot of things in the apartment. It also matches the gray really well. Um, yellow and gray go really well together. So that is our winner. The order was pretty quick to arrive and I will definitely link it below for you guys. If you're interested in buying the same peel and stick that we used, the first order of business was of course to clean the surface. You just want to make sure that you remove any dust or or greasy residue off of the cabinets before applying the peel and stick. Now this is sort of a great use case to try and apply peel and stick on cabinets because these cabinets are literally the smoothest, flattest surface that there is. It will not leave any marks once it will be removed off of these doors. So the peel and stick wallpaper comes in rolls and we ordered two different widths cutting the wallpaper was the second step. The easiest is probably to cut the length of the piece you need and add just half an inch on each side, both the top and the bottom, in order to manage the roll more easily. Especially if it's just one person applying the peel and stick, it's easier to have smaller pieces cut, but you want to go over each side and then cut the excess with an X-Acto knife, which I'll show you in a minute. The back of the peel and stick had this grid that was useful to make the cuts and I also used the back with the logo to just keep consistency with the pattern and always have the same side up. I wasn't sure if it was going to be visible really and it was probably not necessary to make sure that it was all upside up but I guess I, uh, I just wanted to, to make sure of that. So the application is fairly easy and straightforward once you get the gist of it. With one hand, you peel off the back of the peel and stick. And with the other, using this tool, this flat spatula of sorts, you just um, make sure that you eliminate all of the air bubbles. And the best motion I find was to go down in the center of the panel 
and then perpendicular left and right to eliminate all of the air bubbles. Using the spatula, it's nice to crease the edges here that, ha that are at an angle to be able to then use the X-Acto knife and cut exactly where the panel ends. Here in this shot, you can see that it looks like I'm cutting in the void, but I actually could feel the seam or the edge of the door on the right side. So I'm just following the edge of the door. My X-Acto knife is positions at a slight angle, it's not quite perpendicular, and that way it basically just slide along the edge of the door and makes for a very clean cut. Now it is a very repetitive process and it is also a very lengthy process. It did take me a full day to cover the entire kitchen. I tackled this in two afternoons. So you might want to do it with two people to make the process go by faster. You don't necessarily need to be two to maneuver each panels, although some pieces might be bigger than others. We didn't want to just cover the doors. We wanted to cover all of the edges, the corner pieces, the toe kick, the side kick. So it definitely took a very long time. You have to plan for at least one full day if you're tackling an entire kitchen like we did. Toward the end of the process, I was left with bits and pieces and I didn't feel like buying another roll. So I wanted to see if I could, in some areas, use multiple pieces together. <laughs> and it doesn't look great. I'm not very happy with the seams. So I still want to go back and sort of make it that extra perfect and special. I would say you definitely have to get creative. One thing, if I was to redo it, would be to really think about how I'm going to place each panel on the cabinet doors and on their sides, because I might just use one panel for the door and for the sides or something like that. Another task that you guys know I definitely incorporate in my makeovers is the cleaning. And this fridge definitely needed some TLC. All of these finger marks drove us crazy. So I used the same product I used in my previous kitchen makeover that works wonders to remove all of these unpleasant marks. And it makes such a huge difference when you have an exposed fridge like this one. Now cue the relaxation music for some more cleaning time before I get to stage the shelves and the counter. I am now tackling the shelves and staging the shelves here. The best way to proceed here is to remove everything off of the shelves. And start with a blank slate. I decided to put all of the decorations we had on the counter and pick and choose the things that were gonna go back on the shelves. They are very narrow, so we were limited in terms of the shape of the objects. And I also wanted to follow a certain color scheme. So we had the dark brown from 
this section that was original to the kitchen we had the of course new light wood color that we incorporated using the peel and stick some green to make it feel really Japandi and the fourth color was this off-white shade that is also very Japandi After the reveal shots were filmed, we actually upgraded the coffee machine to this Breville that was bought secondhand on Facebook Marketplace for a fraction of the price, and it was barely used. That completes the kitchen makeover, and if you are a coffee aficionado, I would love your recommendations as I might spend a lot of time in this apartment soon, so I know there can be a little bit of a learning curve for these professional machines. So any tips is welcome. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I post a lot of content on interior design, room makeovers, sewing and DIY, and I would really love to have you tag along for the ride. See you in the next one. Bye guys!